Now, we always change it just to make it more fun. Timmy, about 80 tickets for rides in the museum. Timmy, you just got to get the Superman, man. Don't be wasting your money buying 80 tickets. Okay, Timmy bought 80 tickets for rides in the amusement park. Each ride costs five tickets, and he, Timmy has been on X rides so far. Which expression is equivalent to the number of tickets that Timmy has selected? Select all that apply. Now, end of the day, we know that it is minus five tickets for each ride he's going to go on. This is his rides. Okay? I'm going to lose five tickets every single time. I look at this question right here, uh, this would be insane. This would mean that he started the day at 80 tickets. By the time he left, he had more tickets than what he did, that he showed up with. Meaning, every time he rode a ride, he gained five tickets. That'd be good, but that doesn't exist. Now, here's, what's, here's what I find cool. If you do this, 5 times 16 is 80. 5 times x is plus 5x. That's the same answer I just crossed off. This would mean you are gaining tickets. Every time you get on a ride, when the guy isn't looking, you're taking your five tickets back plus five more. You'd be stealing. You're going to end up, ooh, you're going to end up, that's not good. Not good. Now, who can give me the one that makes the most sense? Which one would you pick out as being a correct answer first? Here's what I love about your new textbook, and I also love about math of where they're going. They're not giving you always the one answer that's correct. They're saying select all that work to give me the same quantity. They're opening up your mind to look at and say there's different ways to solve the question that are correct. Aiden, what's a good one? Which one? This means I started the day at 80 tickets. I lose five tickets every time I ride. That's great. Now, I like that. That's my best choice. Because that chronologically goes along with what happened. You bought 80 tickets first. I went to the window, bought 80 tickets. Now every time I go on a ride, I lose five. That's a good answer. Now, this right here, technically the community of property lets me switch the order of an addition problem. So officially, I can switch or rule this, and it becomes 80 plus a negative 5x. We don't use double signs. Plus a negative means minus 5x. So it's the same answer. Flip the order. It's just weird. It means they're charging me my tickets from my 80 at the end of the day, maybe. So I don't, it's weird. I'm getting a negative balance. Maybe they're keeping track of how many rides they go on, then they turn them in late. It's technically correct. It's just the wrong order. Then... Last but not least, this would be the one that separates you on a standardized test of, you know, the distributive property, and you looked at it really close. You guys and gals are always picking the one answer that's correct, moving on. 5 times 16, what's 5 times 16? 80. You learned that, little kid lens. What is 5 times a negative 1x? Many people aren't going to pick that. And what happens is, is when you color in this one here, they think you're an okay math kid. When you realize that you can switch the order on the commutative property, they're saying, ooh, that's a, smart, that's a smart cookie. Then, when you color in this last choice, they realize you've learned the distributive property. So, select all that apply. Technically speaking, there's three answers that work. Anytime they do all that apply, cross out the ones that don't work, then check to see if the other two are equal. We're at four minutes. Giddy up.